Hello everybody, this is going to be a quick info video about how to write processing JS if you've been writing processing Java. Uh, so when you download processing by default, it's in Java mode. Uh, and let me just start up a quick, simple sketch. Uh, let's do a size. Uh, let's do a void draw with a background. Okay, and when you run this sketch, it actually pops up a new window. Uh, you can do print lines, for example, print line, hello world, in the void setup, we'll run it just once. Uh, and that's all good and fine. And this is only going to run on your desktop. So what we'd like to do is be able to run these sketches in a web browser, uh, and we need processing JavaScript to do that. And unfortunately, processing JavaScript is a completely different language. Um, it looks almost the same because of how the processing API and interpreter works, but there are some uh, significant differences. Okay, so uh, first you need to go into this top right, click on the Java, and then uh, if you don't have JavaScript already, you need to click on Add Mode, click on the JavaScript mode, and click Install. I already have it installed, so it says Remove, but you know it's going to look like this, and you're going to click Install, and it's going to install it. You then need to restart processing, uh, and then you'll have this JavaScript in the drop-down menu, uh, and then the first time you might try to change it into JavaScript, you'll you get an error and uh, you can see actually my processing glitches out. It says, please save the sketch before changing the mode. So you actually need to save a sketch or have an empty sketch before you change the mode. I'm going to save it uh, into a folder called my apps on my desktop. Uh, and I'm going to call it um, uh, example uh, JS. Okay. And I'm going to save it and great. And now I have this project called example JS. And now I can switch it into JavaScript mode. Excellent. And JavaScript mode, as you can see, is pretty much the same. Got a different background, you know, different um, color here. But when you run it, instead of running it in your desktop, it runs in a browser. And so actually it creates a folder called web export inside the processing project folder. You know, this is your code. This is th this code right here is this PDE file. Uh, and then the web export contains um, the same PDE, uh, an index.html, which is the file that's being opened by your web browser. So you can open up in a different browser. So if I had like a Chrome window open, for example, I could go ahead and, and pop that uh, into Chrome. Uh, and also has processing.js. Um, so uh, what are some differences here? Well, uh, besides the fact that it runs in the browser, a lot of things are actually different in JavaScript mode. So if you have integers in Java, you might expect uh, print line x divided by 2 to truncate uh, because this is integer division, right? Uh, and so that's not true. It actually is going to become a 2.5. So there are actually no primitive variable static types uh, in JavaScript. Uh, and so this is a huge problem if you have, for example, an interray. Let's say we have the interray uh, x equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and uh, we want to print... Uh, an element uh, at, uh, let's say, x dot length divided by 2 is going to be the index. Uh, and let's say we do x sub index. Okay, so in Java, this would be fine. This would get, uh, you know, five elements divided by 2, truncates to 2, index 2 would be this number 3. So this would print 3 in Java, but here it's going to print undefined because this is actually trying to print the index 2.5, uh, which fails. Okay, so whenever you have this thing, uh, you need to use the either processing int cast function, which will convert it into an integer, uh, or you need to use a traditional Java cast, which processing's interpreter will also treat as uh, cast int. And so now this is equivalent to the number two. And we can see that we could do print line int index. And you can see that that is two as opposed to regular index. Uh, which is going to be the number 2.5. Okay, uh, so this is all fine and good. Uh, once you do that, you'll be able to index into arrays properly. Uh, there's some other big differences, however. So let's say you create a, a Boolean variable, like uh, you, you know, whether you're dead or not in your game, uh, and then you decide to also create a function uh, called void dead. Uh, in processing Java, this is okay because uh, Java cares about the types, and this object is of type Boolean, and this is a function which is not even an object in Java. Uh, so that's fine. In JavaScript, unfortunately, these are going to conflict. And so let's we do let's say we do a print line derp de herp uh, here in the dead function. If we try to call this function, let's do dead, okay, uh, you will see that doesn't print anything because actually this, this line will crash uh, because we tried to create a function and a variable uh, and this is not sure what it's referring to. So you have to make this like uh, a different name, uh, do dead, uh, and, and now uh, it'll actually work. Okay, uh, This is super, super problematic because in uh, processing you have a habit perhaps of doing a function like uh, you know mouse pressed and sometimes using um, 
void mouse pressed, uh, right? Uh, but you have to be very careful because there's a lot of magic happening behind the scenes in processing JS to allow those variables and functions to have the same names. Okay, what are some other differences? Uh, images are different in processing uh, JavaScript. Uh, let's say you had a p image image. Uh, in later versions of processing, you're required to load it here in Java mode. So hello.png. Okay, uh, if you're loading it here, you know this is not going to work anyway. Okay. So what's different? You can't resize images, so the image.resize function doesn't work. Um, you know, if I want to change the size, this is not going to succeed. Uh, how would you do it? A couple ways. You can do uh, a scale. Okay, the way, way you do that, you do a push matrix, uh, you do a translate to the location, uh, some x y coordinate, you do um, the a rotation if you want to do a rotation, and then you do a scale. Uh, with uh, some kind of uh, sizing factor. Okay, you can look up the documentation for that. Uh, then you do your image at a coordinate. Okay, uh, and then you do a pot matrix. Okay, so unfortunately you require that for resizing. Of course, the other way you can resize it is just take the image uh, and resize it. Okay, uh, I recommend if you're uploading these projects to websites that you not have a file in the data folder. So uh, while it's normal to put this hello.png in a folder called data. Uh, and then stick the uh, image in there or do the sketch add file for images. Uh, this is not going to really work too well on the web. Instead, what you should do is go to a website like Imager and then upload this hello.png and then use the full URL, uh, www.imager.com slash whatever. Uh, and then that's going to be uh, the image you, you want to pick. Okay. Another thing you cannot do in the JS mode is you cannot do uh, background images. So you can't do background some image. Uh, that doesn't work. So instead, you have to like image the image zero zero. Uh, so that's a small fix. Okay. Um, what are some other things? Uh, images don't load instantly. So if you do like an image equals load image uh, dot png, and then you try to uh, access the pixels array here, um, load pixels, uh, and then do image dot pixels, you know, something something something. Um, this would work fine in Java because the the, the instant this line runs, uh, processing will load the image in Java. But in JavaScript, uh, this is actually going to load in synchronously, which means that when you run this line, it may be like a second later before the image actually shows up in the browser. Uh, so you have to do this a uh, bit of a hack uh, to be able to get processing to uh, load images, and you'll immediately you'll have to do this at pjs preload equals s.png. Uh, okay, and what this will do is the processing JS interpreter will say, ah, before I even run any of the code, I'm going to wait for this uh, to load, uh, and then I'm going to run this code. And so then uh, this load pixels and any kind of operation on it will work. Uh, this is especially important if you want to do some kind of uh, image mask or you want to uh, do some kind of blending options with images early on. Okay. So we're in JavaScript. Um, what else doesn't work? Uh, it's important to note that uh, since you're in JS, you don't have the <laughs> Java API. So uh, if you're trying to sort things with arrays.sort, that's not going to work. Collections.sort, that's not going to work. Math.abs is not going to work. Luckily, a lot of these math functions are provided by the processing API. Uh, but if you're using the Java API, it's a no can do. Also, that means that a lot of the audio libraries like Minim, not going to work. Sound Cipher, not going to work. The video libraries like Capture, uh, not going to work. And so uh, there are alternatives that work in JS mode only, uh, but there are very few alternatives that work in both JS and Java, uh, and so you'll have to do a lot of care to run it both in Java and JavaScript until you get it to work. Uh, sometimes you can do these clever hacks where you say boolean is JS equals uh, 5 divided by 2 equal equal 2.5, uh, and then you can do like uh, if something is JavaScript then you'll do one thing, if it's Java then you'll do something else. Okay. Um, what else is different? Uh, there are uh, very big differences between chars in Java and characters in uh, JavaScript. So um, if you have code that depends on char at, uh, if you have code which compares characters with their ASCII values, uh, like if you do a char x equals a, if a equal equal 97, this would be true in Java. This may very well not be true in JavaScript, okay, because um, you know, this could be a string, this could be a string as well. Um, you, you have to really debug it by adding print lines, okay. Uh, there are a few other more advanced differences, but the most important thing is now that you see these differences, how do you debug your program? Uh, processing JS mode will not tell you which error, which line uh, uh, your program actually exceptions on. And so you have to do a sort of a binary search. So what I would do is uh, delete the entire program, 
uh, until the end of void setup and then add the print line to hello. Okay. If this line doesn't run, that means that something else in void setup failed, something else above failed. Okay. Then add a print line at the bottom of your void draw. Uh, and uh, if that runs, uh, then good. If not, then something above it. And then keep adding print lines until you determine the location where the pro uh, program has halted. Uh, and then you can investigate that line. Is it, um, uh, did you expect division to work like in Java? Are you using an image in a strange way? Uh, are you accessing a resource that's not available because it's, you know, in the data folder but not on the web? Um, those kind of things. Okay. So, uh, good luck. Uh, there's definitely some uh, rough edges to processing JavaScript, but it's great in uh, making uh, small applets that work on the web small sketches. Uh, so uh, if you have any more questions, post a comment. You can email me uh, at uh, inquiry uh, at ktbyte.com. Uh, and uh, uh, hope to see you later. Bye-bye.